Italy versus Brazil. Why is the Brazilian division of Fiat so successful while its Italian counterpart keeps struggling to gain traction? Well, in my first video for car industry analysis, I'm going to analyze the situation of Fiat in these two markets and how they are so different in terms of positioning, pricing and lineup. So let's start with the importance of Italy and Brazil within Fiat Global Sales. Last year, in 2021, these two markets represented 56% of the brand's global sales, or more or less 700,000 units combined, over 1.25 million units sold by the brand globally. In Italy, Fiat is rapidly losing traction. 30 years ago, Fiat's market share uh, totaled 33%, which more or less one in three of cars were uh, sold in Italy were Fiat. The share dropped by 10 points 10 years later and remained stable by 2012. However, this year we've seen a, a very, very low market share of 14%. In Brazil, Fiat is also the leader, and even if it has lost some traction, mostly because of the arrival of new brands like Hyundai or the Chinese companies, Fiat is still the leader and continues to have more than 20% of the market share, which is even higher than what it used to have 30 years ago. This is happening despite the fact that Fiat has not uh, has not launched any SUV until recently, of course, and the fact that even if, if Jeep is grabbing the attention for those looking for SUVs over the last years. Uh, the, the fear, the first of all, why this is happening, Fiat, the public's perception towards the brand is quite different. In Brazil, Fiat is a cool brand with affordable maintenance costs. In Italy, Fiat is mostly associated to cheap cars and has disappeared from many segments. Fiat, for example, Fiat in Italy has different models, has six different models in its lineup, excluding, of course, vans and light commercial vehicles, which include the successful, of course, the Fiat 5 and the first generation Fiat 500, which is already 15 years old. Uh, then, um, the Fiat Panda, which is only uh, popular in Italy, which was launched in 2012. Then the 500X, Fiat's only SUV in Europe, introduced in 2015. The Tipo Family was also introduced in 2015. And the most recent launch introduction from Fiat in Europe is the, five, the electric 500. In Brazil, the lineup is bigger and younger. If we include the pickups, which are a very important um, segment in Brazil, the oldest model available uh, uh, for Fiat in Brazil is the Mobi. The Mobi is a city car presented in 2016, which is the same year when Fiat introduced the Toro, the, the mid-size uh, uh, pickup. One year later, the brand replaced the Palio with the um, Argo, and in 2018, it introduced the sedan version of the Argo, which is called uh, Kronos. Since 2020, while Fiat Italy launched the, just one, one product, since 2020, Fiat Brazil has presented three new cars. The second generation of the Strada, which is the world's best-selling small pickup. The Pulse, which is the, the brand's first SUV for the region. And this year, some weeks ago, the Fastback, its second SUV. So it's, it's, it's consequently the gap, uh, the age gap between the lineups in Italy and Brazil is quite big. The Italian is an average of 8.7 years old, while the Brazilian lineup is just 3.4 years old. Any doubts why the Carioca division of Fiat uh, keeps leading while the division from Italy struggles. 
Thanks for watching until now. Remember that you can read the full article in my, my blog, fiatgroupworld.com, or you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter for more updates. Thank you.